Hello, today I'm going to be talking about the European elections to its parliament. Let's begin. Hello, welcome to Global Nationalism. I support nationalism in my country, India, and in all countries around the globe. Today we're going to be talking about the elections for the EU parliament and uh, examining the results and seeing what nationalists in Europe can do to promote their agenda. This is important because I believe that the EU is engaging in policies that are not helpful to the nation states of Europe and are damaging to it. These include policies like mass migration, both legal and illegal, and supporting Ukraine against Russia, the green uh, policies, environmental policies. So, yeah, as a nationalist, I want to see what nationalists in Europe can do. Let's get started. Here are the results of the election. The largest uh, result are the EPP, the European People's Party, got 190 seats this is out of 1720. And then there's the rest, the European Conservatives and Reformists group got 76, the Identity and Democracy group got 58, the Greens EFA got 52, 6, and then uh, the non dash members got 45, the left got 39, and newly elected members not allied to any of the political groups set up in the outgoing parliament are 44. Now, uh, let's see who the winners and losers are of this, these elections. Um, there's the, f f the winners are... France's national rally. The right-wing EPP group has remained the biggest group in the parliament, gaining 13 seats compared to 2019. Italy's Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni, 28% of the vote. And with uh, national rally winning, Le Pen's national rally, Emmanuel Macron, the French president, uh, said he would was pushed to dissolve parliament and called snap elections. I have spoken about the election French politics before in the French 2022 election. You will see a link to that video on the screen. You can check it out if you are interested. And the losers are the Greens in Austria and Germany, who performed a lot worse than expected. The Liberal Renew Group lost 20 seats compared to 2019 across different member states, this is Macron's group, and the Social Democrats in Germany. Chancellor Olaf Scholz's party finished joint second with the far-right AFD behind the EPP. Let me look at the different uh, political groupings. First, I'll talk with the groups themselves. The European Parliament is made up of political groups. The members of the European Parliament sit in political groups. They are not organized by nationality, but by political affiliation. There are currently seven political groups in the European Parliament. There are the groups, the group of the European People's Party, and the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats in the European Parliament, the Renew Europe Group, Greens or European Free Alliance, European Conservatives and Reformists Group, Identity and Democracy Group, the left group in the European Parliament. Now let me look at each group. Here's the EPP, European People's Party. Uh, their position is to be a true global leader. To take a global leadership role on foreign policy issues, the EU must strengthen its ability to speak with one voice. This includes moving from unanimous to majority defined decision making on foreign affairs issues. I think that this is not a good policy. The EU works because 
all the countries have a say and most of the time their decisions are made unanimously and uh, this prevents any country from being left out which can hurt the unity of the organization so majority decision making is not I think suitable for the EU they say we believe that Europe must act actively advocate for human rights democracy and the fundamental principles of the EU in all its policies that have an external dimension including development migration security counterterrorism enlargement and trade I disagree with this EU these are not necessarily held within con other countries they don't always agree with these values and the EU must respect that fact and should not promote its values in other countries. To strengthen the security and move towards a true defense union, we also need to prioritize energy security in Europe and prevent energy being used as a political tool. What does Renew Europe say? They are... Uh, they want to... Uh, um, move forward for the, us Europe is our future and is well worth fighting for the European Union has a chance to renew itself and be able to deliver on the bigger issues deliver on the expectations of our citizens and deliver tangible added value enabling them to understand how it positively affects their lives our commitment is clear it is because we believe in the future of Europe that we want to change it Our Europe, one Europe. For the European Union to be strong, it must be both the project of European unification after the Cold War, as well as the post-World War II peace project, reuniting Europe through a genuine and deep process of integration of all European countries from east to west and from north to south, wants to be a key element of our Europe for the future. I don't think this is necessary. I think Europe union as it is is integrated enough I don't think it needs to be integrated more but generally these are okay but things I don't really have many issues with this although it's uh, very vague and doesn't have any tangible uh, qualities to it as far as policy goes Next is the Greens or the EFA. The Greens EFA uh, group stands for a society where everyone, regardless of gender or sexual orientation, age, race, or religion, can live a dignified and fulfilling life. As a political force, we put the human rights of all human beings, present and future, at the front and center of all policies we advocate and implement. Even though compared with many areas in the world, the European Union is a desirable place to live, the very possibility for each and every human being to live in a dignity is at grave risk. And social inequality has been and is on the rise, not just in terms of income, but also in terms of access to decent work, to healthcare and to education. Women's rights and gender equality are being challenged, while civil liberties and the foundations of democracy are under threat. So yeah, these are the kind of things that the Greens are focused on women's rights, gender equality, uh, sexual orientation, so LGBTQ, and the climate crisis, obviously, as Green parties. I, these things are very airy fairy uh, feminism and human rights, which are good. I believe in them, but I don't think that they should be a major focus for any country. And this is the European conservative and reformist group founded to take the EU in a new direction. The ECR group is a center-right political group in the European Parliament founded in 2009 with a common cause to reform the EU based on Euro-realism respecting the sovereignty of nations and focusing on economic recovery, growth, and competitiveness. Euro-realists, not anti-European. Euro-realism is the driving force of the ECR group, which distinguishes our agenda from the other political groups in the European Parliament. The European Union needs a new direction. 
Some argue that the solution is more Europe, others that the solution is no Europe. We offer a bold alternative vision of a reformed EU as a community of nations cooperating in areas where they have some common interests that can best be advanced by working together. We are the voice of common sense. The European Union has overreached, has become too centralized, too ambitious, and too out of touch with ordinary citizens. Um, we believe in restoring common sense in Brussels, advocating for the equal treatment of all member states, pushing the EU to be more fiscally responsible, finding new ways to connect people in business, creating solutions in micro crisis and terrorist threat. I think all these are reasonable uh, goals for any political group, especially in Europe. And I agree with all of them. The left. Uh, we fight for an EU that works for people and the planet. We work for a Europe where justice, democracy, and solidarity prevail over corporate power. Join us in pursuing radical transformation that empowers the many over the few. So typical leftist rhetoric here. I'm not against any of these things. I think corporate power should not be excessive over governments. It should be uh, limited. Governments should be able to enforce laws against corporations and uh, not allow them to exploit uh, the workers. But these are all within limitations. You can't have too much regulation which uh, prevents companies from developing and growing and engaging in honest business so yeah just i don't agree with the left on identity and democracy group their president is marco zani their focus is creating jobs and growth, increasing security, tackling illegal immigration, as well as making the EU less bureaucratic. And this is what their uh, main statutes, their ID statutes say. Their political declaration is in Article 3. The members of the ID group base their political project on the upholding of freedom, sovereignty, of subsidiarity, and identity of the European peoples and nations. They acknowledge the Greek, Roman, and Christian heritage as the pillars of European civilization. They advocate voluntary cooperation between sovereign European nations and therefore reject any further evolution toward a European superstate. The members of the ID group acknowledge that the nation state is the highest possible level in which democracies can fully function. They oppose any new transfer of power from the nations to the EU. I agree with this. Uh, whatever power the EU has is enough. It doesn't mean any more. And they should keep that power with the nation states. It will be good for the European Union itself. If the nations themselves are strong. Inspired by the idea of a Europe of cooperation, the new alliance and its members are conscious of the need to deeply reform the existing EU in a way to strengthen the principles of subsidiarity and democracy, to introduce direct democracy, etc. They want to safeguard the identity of the citizens and nations in Europe, their right to control, regulate, and limit immigration is a fundamental principle shared by the members of the group. Now, what do the results show? For each group, the left gained two seats, the Social Democrats lost three seats, the Greens and the EF European Free Alliance lost 20 seats, the Renew uh, group lost 22 seats, the European People's Party uh, got 14 more seats, ECR got plus seven seats, ID plus nine, and the non-aligned got 45 and the others are 44. So this shows that the losers of these elections are on the liberals and the left, the s and the Green and the Renew who are liberals. The actual left groups won some, so they didn't have a too bad performance, but the uh, 
two left parties, SND and G Green and EFA, lost heavily. So this is a good showing by the right, but not good enough. They don't have a majority. ECR and ID have only 76 and 58. The EPP is a centrist party, uh, but also has uh, conservative parties. As we can see, it's a traditional center-right bloc. And, but normally, the EPP has aligned with the SND and uh, Green parties, if I'm not wrong. And I think, I'm not sure what their relationship with Renew was. But I think they're much more friendly to Renew than they are to say the IEP. So I think that that will continue. However, now there's two... Uh, so yeah, there are two options that the nationalists of the ECR and the ID have. And one is that they can uh, combine their seats together as in an alliance and get at least a third of the non-aligned uh, MEPs and at least half of the others to form more than 200 seats as an alliance. And this will be enough to prevent the EPP and SND from steamrolling their agendas. Or they can, the ECR and ID, can uh, align with the EPP and try to pull it more towards the right. But there are uh, strength, uh, benef strengths and weaknesses in both plans. The strengths and, uh, of the first plan, which is uh, forming uh, alliance with between the nationalist parties and the nationalists from the non-aligned and other MEPs are that they will be ideologically aligned and be uh, able to vote in unison without much division and they'll be able to understand each other and form better connections with each other but the weakness is that they just do not have the numbers to overpower the left and the cent centrists and will not be able to influence the European Commission enough, which is actually the actual lawmaking organ of the EU, not the parliament, which simply votes to either give us assent or dissent to laws introduced by the EU Commission. And the strength of the uh, plan, the choice to join the EPP, and pull it right are that you simply get a majority like a proper majority of almost more than 250 seats and but the weakness is that you have to sacrifice some of your ideological goals and uh, compromise on certain interests that you have I simply don't know which is the best option Though I prefer the first, even though that would keep them in the opposition, it would help uh, give put some pressure on the liberals and left and give us proper voice to the people who elected them. But I can see the positives on the other side as well. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Please share your thoughts in the comment section. If you want to see other videos about elections, click here. If you want to see my previous video, click here. If you want to see the sources I use for this video, click the links in the description below. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.